responsibility so people are making money and getting rich off of the killing and the shooting of our children and we've got to stop that. We've got to ban assault weapons, we've got to stop easy access to guns, but we must also be very careful. We have to be careful not to fall into that mentality that is so easy in our society today of waiting for somebody else to stop the problem. We gotta stop waiting for somebody else. That's that same mentality that rather than come out in our block, we say, put a blue light on the block and let the blue light take care of crime. No, we must be the blue lights on our block. Every single one of us have to be blue light. We have a mentality of looking today for somebody else to solve our problem. I never understood in Chicago, people call 311 to say, I'm worried about Miss Jones across the street, could you send somebody out for a well-being check? It's a good thing I don't run 311. Because I would say, why would you call me to send a stranger out to see Miss Jones and she lives across the street from you? Get up off your butt, walk across the street and see how Miss Jones is yourself. Stop looking for somebody else to take care of your neighbors. Listen, sisters and brothers, we are never, ever, ever going to stop this epidemic of violence. We are never going to end this emergency state of shooting and killing by passing the buck. We cannot keep looking for somebody else to solve the problems here in Chicago. The violence will stop in Chicago when we decide to stop the violence in Chicago. Not the governor, not the mayor, it's you and I. When we decide to stop the violence, we can stop it. When we make up our minds, we are not gonna tolerate it another day. See, this violence thing is easy. It doesn't mean that we don't have the power to do it, we just lack the will to do it. Some of y'all, I'm a preacher, so some of y'all remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And remember Abraham wrestled with, with God and said, well, God, if there's 50 righteous, will you save Sodom and Gomorrah? God said, yes. Well, if there's 40, if there's 30, if there's 20. Well, God, what if there's just 10 righteous people, will you save Sodom and Gomorrah? And God says, yes. And then the next chapter, we see Sodom and Gomorrah up in ashes. Why? Because evil was so bad? No, because 10 righteous people would not stand up and do what they had to do to save Sodom and Gomorrah. And the same thing is happening today in our society. We have to take back our homes. It starts with the homes. Somebody shout, our homes. Our homes. No, y'all, that's not a pity. But say, our homes. Our homes. Say it one more time like you believe it. Say, our homes. Our homes. We have to start by taking back our homes and taking back our children. Yes. I had three adopted sons. And I told them early on, I am not here to be your friend. In fact, I can't be your worst enemy if you keep going crazy on me. We have to take control over our children in our homes. Letting the children know that we love them enough to do what the Bible says, train them up in the way that they should go. We have to train our children up and we have to give them the structure and give them the discipline they need in order to become productive human beings to reach their goals and to reach all their destiny.